Well, Lee, it's very nice to meet you, and I understand that you are the uh, uh, in charge of teaching writing. Um, yeah, I do a lot of writing with the middle school and with the high school, uh -huh. and I'm the chairman of the middle school English department. So, uh -huh. so, so you teach more than writing, I would imagine. Right, I also teach literature. Okay. Which is one of the nice things at Norman Howard, because we have three periods a day for language enrichment. Students generally have one reading period, one period devoted just to writing, and then another period devoted to literature. So it's a very language-rich curriculum. Writing is one of the most complex things that you can do. It calls on a lot of working memory, because you have to remember what you want to say, you have to remember the rules of grammar, you have to remember remember how to spell things, you have to remember how to put a paragraph together, do your transitions, all of the other things. It's just a very complex process. So what we do is we really break it down mm -hmm. into a six steps. And for each step, we give the students some language, some questions that they can ask themselves so that they know if they're really attending to that step of writing. Okay. Uh, the strategy that we use is called Empower. Uh -huh. And the first thing students do is they evaluate instructions. So they actually circle action words, underline keywords, and then paraphrase back what the instructions are. Because if a student doesn't understand what the process is or what the purpose is, mm -hmm. they won't get the writing assignment correct. So they have to s repeat it back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then we ask them to make a plan, mm -hmm. and that's where we look at our thinking maps. And I don't know if anybody else has talked about thinking maps, but these are a set of eight different types of visual repre representations of eight different types of thinking that were developed by David Hirely. And we use the thinking maps throughout the school. If you go in any classroom, you'll see the posters on the wall, and students know how to use the the maps, we have software for it, so that's really one of our baseline strategies for writing and thinking. So we ask them to map out their ideas, mm -hmm. then organize their ideas, color coding, um, numbering, however they might do that. Then they're going to make a draft, then they're going to evaluate their own work using a self-editing checklist, and at the end they rework it. And so then we're going to go to the next step. After thinking maps, they have an, an action plan. Right, and the strategy that we use is Empower. They have a checklist, and the checklist asks them to do certain things in each step of the writing process. Mm -hmm. And they check in with the teacher, you know, as they're working through. Mm -hmm. If they have questions, you know, they can have a conference with me, or I check at the end to make sure that they're on the right step. Right so the, the checklist isn't something that they read and then follow. It's something that they have there while they're working and check it off as they complete each right. part of it. That's one of the problems, I think, isn't it, with children yes. with learning disabilities is the organization that's required for writing, which yeah. is very intense. And that's how thinking maps help, because it helps them organize their information. Right. And the nice thing is that a student only has to attend to one small chunk of the writing process at a time. Mm -hmm. So in Instead of looking at a blank page and saying, I don't know where to begin, they just think, oh, okay, well, what's my topic? All right, well, I know I want to write about the oceans. And then they do a little more talking, and they do some brainstorming, and then they refine that topic. So each step is just a small, discrete part of the process. And then it's not as daunting. So then step one might be a little complicated. It's like, I don't know what I want to talk about, so mm -hmm. let's brainstorm that. Absolutely. So and sometimes we brainstorm as a class. Sometimes we brainstorm just one-on-one -on -one with a teacher's conference. Mm -hmm. So then after that, then they, then they do a draft. Is the draft next? Then the draft is next after they've kind of organized. So either using numbers or color coding or figuring out after the brainstorming. Because uh, they may come up with a lot of different ideas. Oh, and, and they haven't chosen one. And so, well, even when you've chosen a topic, you may want to say a lot about it, and you may have to narrow that down. And so you're really looking at defining what you're writing about through a topic sentence or through a thesis statement. Okay. And then that's a limiting factor. Okay. So they're really focusing, like a camera focuses. So first you identify what you want to talk about, mm -hmm. and then you you define the parameters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That and then you come up like with ideas. You're giving me ideas for my own writing. Okay. <laughs> yep, you come up with ideas, and then you cherry pick from the ideas that you come up with mm -hmm. um, how, which ones you want to use. Uh -huh. And then you number them or figure out how you're going to talk about them, what were you going to talk about uh -huh. them. Then you use, um, and we have a very structured kind of paragraph approach with topic sentences and uh, our supporting information we call FREDs, facts, reasons, examples, and details. So for each one of those FREDs, uh -huh. there's a follow-up sentence or they use textual evidence and go back to the book or a, a piece of informational text. That's then transitions, you know, finally a concluding sentence. 
So it's very structured. And it that helps is, students. But know. it makes for a very interesting piece of writing. Well, and a cohesive. And in the middle school, most of what we do is we do because we're teaching the students these skills. So we model a lot of these steps of the process using the smart board, using a we do approach. Students will work together. And so our plan is that by the time they're in high school, they know the process, they know the structure, and they can apply it to the content that they're learning in high school. So these kids, when they get out of um, the lower grades, are better prepared to write papers than most kids going into college are today. They should be. <laughs> you <laughs> know, and, that's and the it goal anyway. From, it is the goal. Yeah. And I mean, that's one of the luxuries <laughs> of having that writing period every single day. Mm -hmm. um, for a while, I did some extra teaching at Bryant and Stratton College, which is a college for um, it's business. It's it? business college. Yeah. And I think that the students here at Norman Howard did have a better idea of how to put together a sentence, how to put together a paragraph, how to put together an essay, mm -hmm. just because they've had all their practice. Mm -hmm. How to put together a sentence. Even in eighth grade, I do a quick review of the parts of speech because they're not necessarily automatic, especially after someone has spent uh, two months in the summer not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about the requirements for a complete sentence. And then we do some practice and we talk about how we can combine sentences. We talk about how we can look for run-ons. I think most of the run-ons I find are when um, a student uses a pronoun as a subject and they don't realize that it's a new sentence. Oh, okay. So that I, he, she, we, that can get them every time because they don't realize that that's a new subject verb combination. Oh, okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess the comprehension would be the, the really important part, wouldn't it? It is, and in the middle school we looked at what students could do, and I think it was four or five years ago, realized that even discerning a main idea from a piece of informational text was very hard. So we looked at the strategies out there and we kind of retrofitted one that we found uh, called Unravel, which helps students kind of look at the text features first before they even start. So it's like a multi-pass reading. The first thing they do is they look at the text features, the captions, the pictures, the title, the subheadings, the vocabulary boxes. They make a prediction what they think the main idea will be. They go through and they um, star the, the text features that they think are going to be the biggest help. They go through and they read it. They, um, again, annotate the text based on what they think the controlling idea of the topic is. Mm -hmm. And so then what we have them do to create a main idea is say, what's the broad topic? And then what's the controlling idea? What is this text telling us about that topic? Mm -hmm. So that helps. I mean, it's, it's difficult and inferential uh, comprehension. You have to look for you know, some of the things that the author's not saying and help students look for those different keys that will help figure out what the main idea is. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's, pro it's a process and students here get two periods a day, one in reading and one in literature. So tell me about that. the difference between the reading class and the literature class. Reading class will work on discrete reading skills based on where the students are. So there are a number of different programs, either phonetic programs or other types of programs that help boost decoding and fluency skills. And then the ELA class is the literature class where we read books, discuss literary elements, mm -hmm. kind of learn, look at the themes and the life lessons there. Well, there are some children, aren't there, who have um, a, a great deal of difficulty reading because the words won't hold still? Right. We generally read the text aloud in class, stopping several times to discuss things and whatever questions the students have. So it's a very rich discussion. So they have to read aloud. Some do. I don't force any student to okay. read aloud who doesn't want to. Okay. You know, because I don't want to scar them for life. <laughs> and when students are ready, they'll generally volunteer to do that. Okay. And most of the reading that's done outside of class are smaller informational pieces where they can use the technology to um, text to speech to listen to it. So they have access that way. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they use the Unravel checklist. Yeah. Okay. So I do thank you All right. so much. Well, good luck in your project. Thank you, Trish. All right.